And welcome everyone to Legal Matters, an informational and news call-in show devoted to legal topics of interest to Stateline viewers. I'm your host, Alan Jones, and my first guest is attorney Michael Crosby with the Crosby Law Firm. We have attorneys standing by now to take your call at the number on your screen. That's 815-397-2006. They'll be able to provide you with free information on your issue. The call is confidential, so pick up the phone now and call the Crosby Law Firm throughout the next hour. Again, that number, 815-397-2006. And Michael, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Alan. Uh, looking forward to the topic that we're going to be discussing today. I'm not going to step on your opening <laughs> statement, but looking forward to it. A lot of good information for the folks out there today. So okay. thank you. No problem. Looking forward to it myself. Thank you. Looking at our opening statement, we'll take a look at essential documents in advance care planning, specifically wills, living wills, powers of attorney, and much more. Now, these documents are incredibly important to you, our viewers, so please stay tuned. This segment will save you money and help you and your family avoid unnecessary heartache. In the second segment, we'll continue our popular You Want to Know question and answer session devoted to questions posed by you, the viewer, by way of telephone calls and social media. Again, that number is 815-397-2006. We have attorneys standing by now to take your call at the number on your screen. But before we get started, please note the Crosby Law Firm represents thousands of individuals just like you regarding different legal issues. Just as our local hospitals handle a multitude of health care issues, Crosby Law Firm can help you with a multitude of legal care matters as well. So again, call now, 815-397-2006. The Crosby Law Firm has a Center for Divorce and Family Law an injury department, which includes, but not limited to, auto and motorcycle accidents, as well as slip and fall, medical malpractice, workers' compensation, and social security disability matters. There's also a bankruptcy institute, an office for DUI, traffic and criminal defense, an advanced care plan and probate center, and a division for real estate, business matters of any size, and much more. So again, please feel free to call, discuss any of these practice areas with the attorney standing by. Again, that number, 815-397-2006. Lawyers are standing by now to take your call. And again, that call is confidential. All right, Michael, again, welcome to our studio. And now let's talk about what we're here to talk about, advanced care plans. Talk about that a little bit. Alan, I'm glad to be here, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. This is a topic that I think our viewers are going to find very, very interesting. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to provide them with some money-saving advice. Well, let's begin. There may be some in the community that don't really believe they need an advanced care plan. They don't have a lot of assets. They don't have a lot of money. Um, but really, that may be further from the truth, right? Absolutely. Uh, the advanced care planning documents that we typically prepare in our office are designed to assist folks of any economic level. These are not designed for folks that are wealthy. These are designed for folks across the spectrum uh, that need this, these basic documents. So don't be don't misunderstand that when we hear the word advanced care plan or estate plan, oh my gosh, I don't have an estate, oh my gosh, I don't need these things. These are basic documents that in our culture, everyone 21 to 90 worth a dollar or a million should have, absolutely. Okay. So now that we understand it's, it's very basic <coughs> that everybody uh, needs this kind of information, um, talk about the, the essential documents that are part of an advanced care plan. Sure. As the uh, screen indicates to the viewer, there are about seven basic documents. Everyone should have a will. Everyone should have a living will, a health care power of attorney, a durable power of attorney, what we call a HIPAA affidavit, a funeral and burial affidavit, and a transfer on death instrument. The will sets out what your wishes are upon your death. The living will addresses what should happen in case you're in a ventilator, comatose, not expected to live, how you'd like to die with dignity and grace. The health care power of attorney and the durable power of attorney address what should happen if you should become disabled. You're alive, not dead, but you are unable to effectively communicate with your health care provider. You'll designate someone else to step into your shoes to deal with the doctor on your behalf when you're incapacitated. The durable power of attorney handles cases when you're alive, 
but unable to deal with business matters or property matters. You're not able to contact the Social Security Administration on your own. Deal with your banker, the IRS, your employer. So this designates that if you're disabled, can't make those interface com communications with your employer, the IRS, the bank, you designate typically your spouse or someone else in your family to take control and to do those things on your behalf until you get better. The transfer and death instrument that I briefly alluded to and that the viewer should see up on the screen as well, what happens when you die and you own a home and how you can pass the house to your children or your loved ones immediately without having to go through the will, without having to go through probate, can save you a tremendous amount of money and can save you a tremendous amount of time. All right, very important information there. A little crushed for time, but we might be able to talk about this some more as well. We need to take a break right now. So be, remember to call. The number is 815-397-2006. And we'll be, more, be back with more on legal matters in just a moment. And welcome back, everyone. Before, we were talking about advanced care and the seven essential documents that, that you said needed to be included in advanced care plan. But there are others you say need to be included as well. Sure. Most folks need those basic seven documents. However, there are a couple of other documents that will pertain to people who have children. So they're worried that they've got minor kids, and should they become disabled, who's going to take care of the minor children? In a will, if they pass away and they have minor children, we have a provision for guardianship. Who's going to raise the kids? Who's going to take care of any funds that may have been left to the kids? <clears throat> if no one's died, but someone's become disabled, we prepare what's called a statutory guardianship form, an affidavit, that designates who they want to take care of their children while they're recovering from their disability. That lasts for up to one year. So that too can be a very important document and a money saver and a heartache saver for those out there who have minor children and need to address that issue as well. And I wanted to touch base on it. It's important for all those young parents out there who have young children. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. All right, thank you, Michael. Now we're gonna get into our um, You Wanna Know segment, of course, where we talk about a uh, question and answer from many of people in the audience. The first question actually ties in with this, my, uh, Michael, from Mark in Boone County. My father died several years ago. We recently lost my mom. I've been named the trustee of my mother's estate and the executor of her will. I'm a bit overwhelmed with this responsibility, as could be expected. And I'm not sure where to turn. Can the Crosby Law Firm help me with this? Good question. And Mark, uh, sorry to hear about the loss of your mother. Uh, this ties in very well to our main topic. On the front end or the middle end of a person's life, we'll take care of these advanced care planning documents that we've just talked about. When someone passes on, we take a look at those advanced care plan documents and the directives that the now deceased left to their loved ones. So Mark, in your case, there was a trust and you're the trustee. We'll handle the trust administration. You're also named in your mother's will as the executor. So we'll take a look at what her will spells out and specifies and assist you in administering her estate and probating the portion of the estate that will pass under the will. It's somewhat of a complicated process. Be happy to help you. We do a lot of this work in our office. We can crystallize the issues and we can develop a pathway that will minimize the confusion and hopefully minimize uh, the sense of anxiety and the overwhelming sense that you now currently have. So Mark, I'd uh, encourage you to give us a call. It's a free consultation. Be happy to sit down and talk with you about this issue. All right, thank you. <coughs> well, the second question, Marnie and Loves Park says, my husband and I have been married for 10 years. We're getting divorced, have children. We own a home, have some bills, have some retirement accounts. I want to hire an experienced lawyer and concerned about the cost of legal representation. Can your law firm help me there? Fair statement to Marnie out there in the audience. Uh, first, Marnie would be happy to sit down and talk with you again. It's a free consultation. I'd encourage you to give us a call tonight. The number's on the screen. We do a lot of divorce work in our office. Uh, one of the first things that we do, and we've been doing it for well over 35 years here in town, local roots, lasting strength. It's my hometown. Uh, we have over 150 years of combined experience with the attorneys in our office. Uh, this makes up a significant portion of our practice. Do a lot of divorce work, a lot of family law work, so Marnie, I'd encourage you to call. 
regarding the expenses, it's very expensive emotionally to go through a divorce, Alan. It's very expensive financially, no question about it. Serious matter. You've been married for 10 years, you've got children together, you want a home together, have some debt, have some retirement account. All of that takes time to undo and to remedy. In our office, we provide a free initial consultation, giving us a chance to properly diagnose the case properly analyze the issues so that Marnie and others out there are able to make informed decisions. Mm. Further in our office, typically on most divorce work, we provide a flat fee. We're not charging by the hour. That way Marnie and others out there won't have to worry about every five minute phone call and getting a bill because we're billing by the hour. They won't have to worry about a two paragraph letter and getting a bill because we're billing by the hour. Most law firms that do divorce work bill by the hour. Our firm we bill by a flat fee. So you're able to budget in advance. You know what's expected of you. You know what it's gonna cost. We'll be happy to structure that f flat fee to accommodate you. If necessary, we'll take a look at payment plans too. So Marnie, I'd encourage you to give us a call. Uh, sorry to hear about the difficulties in your marriage. Think we can be of some help though. Okay, good luck to her. Next question from John in McChesney Park. I've just been arrested for my third DUI in the last five years. Can the Crosby Law Firm help me with this? To Mark and the other Marks out there that have these kinds of DUIs, we don't walk on water. There are no guarantees. These are difficult issues. In our state, when you're arrested, Alan, for a third DUI, the prosecutor has the discretion to prosecute you for a felony and to put you in prison, not county jail. We have a DUI traffic and criminal defense department. We do a lot of DUI defense work. There are some things that we can do. It requires us to build a case around the circumstances of the DUI. I would suggest here that this fellow probably has a serious drinking problem, three DUIs, but we do a lot of this work. The focus would be to try to address the problem and minimize the loss of his liberty, minimize the time that he's gonna spend in jail. Serious matter, I'd encourage you to give us a call. Do not wanna to try to approach this on your own. That'd be a bad case of amateur hour. So give us a call, try to sit down, drill through the issues with you, figure out what the proper procedure is. Mm, and hopefully understand there is a serious problem besides a legal one. Absolutely. Right there. Yes. And uh, for probably a final question, this is, um, I'll get it right here. If I can find it, George in McChesney Park. Okay. Looking at bankruptcy, is that the only way the Crosby Law Firm can help me when dealing with financial difficulty? Good question for George. Um, when someone comes into our office with debt issues, we will examine whether the best way to handle their debt issues is a bankruptcy. Might be. Might be a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, might be a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. However, there are times when we can solve the debt issues short of a formal bankruptcy proceeding. In our office, we commonly refer to that as a voluntary workout, where we take a look at the debts, see if we think we can contact the folks that are owed money, and negotiate settlements, payment plans, interest-free or reduce the interest and the penalties without taking George into a bankruptcy. We do a lot of debt relief work in our office. A substantial amount of our practice is devoted to that. So George, I'd encourage you to give us a call. Be happy to jump on it right away for you. All right, thank you very much, Michael, and that's it. Don't forget, lawmakers and lawyers are standing by for another half hour after the show airs. That number, 815-397-2006. It's all the time we have with the Crosby Law Firm, but Legal Matters continues with Mark Brennison from the American Law Firm after a break.